constructing a tree decomposition. In the previous section, we introduced uh, the notion of tree decompositions and tree widths, and we discussed a canonical example of how to solve an MP hard problem on graphs of bounded tree widths. The problem, there is still a crucial missing piece in our algorithmic use of tree widths, however. Thus far, we have simply provided an algorithm for maximum weight independent set on a graph G, provided we have been given a low width tree decomposition of G. But if we simply encounter G in the wild and no one has uh, been kind enough to hand us a good tree decomposition of it, can we compute one on our own and then proceed with the dynamic programming algorithm? The answer is basically yes, with uh, some caveats. First, we must warn that given a graph G, it is MP harder to determine it's a tree width. However, the situation for us is not actually so bad because we are only interested here in graphs for which uh, the tree width is a small constant. And uh, in this case, uh, we will describe an algorithm with uh, the following guarantee. Given a graph G of a tree width less than W, it will produce a tree decomposition of G of width less than 4W in time big O of F of W times MN where m and n are the number of edges and the nodes of g and f dot is the function that depends only on w. So essentially, when the tree width is small, there is a reasonably fast way to produce a tree decomposition whose width is almost as small as possible. Designing and analyzing the algorithm An obstacle to low tree widths The first step uh, in designing an algorithm for this problem is to work out a reasonable obstacle to a graph G having low tree widths. In other words, as we try to construct a tree decomposition of low widths of G equals to VE, might there be some local structure we could discover that will tell us the tree widths must in fact be large? The following idea turns out to provide us with a, such an obstacle. First, given a two sets Y and Z, which are subset equals to V, of the same size, we say they are separable if uh, some strictly smaller set can completely disconnect them, specifically if there is a set S which is a subset equals to V, such that the size of S is less than the size of Y, which is equals to the size of Z, and uh, there is no part from Y remove S and uh, to Z remove S in G remove S. In this uh, definition, Y and Z need not be disjoint because, I mean, they can overlap in S. Next, uh, we say that a set X of nodes in G is uh, W linked if uh, the size of X is greater than or equal to W and X does not contain separable subsets Y and Z such that the size of Y is equal to the size of Z which is less than or equal to W. For later algorithmic use of W-linked sets, we make note of the following fact. 10.19 Let G equals to V E have M edges. Let X be a set of K nodes in G, and let W less than equals to K be a given parameter. Then we can determine whether X is a W-linked in time big O of F of K times M, where F dot depends only on K. Moreover, if X is not W-linked, we can return a proof of this uh, in the form of sets y and z, which are subset equals to x, and s, which is subset equals to v, such that s, the size of s, is less than the size of y, which is equal to the size of uh, z, but both size of y and z are less than or equal to w, and uh, there is no path from y remove s to z remove s in g remove s. Proof that we are trying to decide whether X contains separable subsets Y and Z such that uh, the size of Y is equal to the size of Z but is less than equal to W. We first uh, enumerate all pairs of uh, sufficiently small subsets Y and Z. Since uh, X only has a 2 to the k subsets, there are at most 4 to the k such pairs. Now for each pair of subsets Y, Z, we must determine whether they are separable. Let L be equals to 
the value of uh, the size of y, which is equal to the size of z, which is less than equal to w. But this is exactly the maximum flow of Minkart theorem when we have an undirected graph with uh, capacities on the nodes. That is, y and z are separable if and only if uh, there do exist. There do not exist L node disjoint paths, each with uh, one end in Y and uh, the other in Z. So see exercise 13 in chapter 7 for the version of maxima flows with capacities on the nodes. We can determine whether such paths exist using an algorithm for flow with uh, unit capacities on the nodes. This takes a uh, time big O of uh, L times M. One should imagine a W linked set as being highly self entwined. It has uh, no two small parts that can be easily split off from each other. At the same time, a tree decomposition cuts off a graph using very small separators. And so it is uh, intuitively reasonable that these two structures should be in opposition to each other. Now 10 to the 20, if a G contains a W plus 1 linked set of size at least 3W, then G has tree width at least W. Proof. Suppose uh, by way of contradiction that G has a W plus 1 linked set X of size at least 3W, and uh, it also has a tree decomposition T and uh, the set VT of width less than W. In other words, each piece VT has size at most W. We may further assume that T and uh, the set VT is uh, non-redundant. The idea of the proof is to find a piece VT that is uh, centered with a respect to X, so that when some part of VT is uh, deleted from G, one small subset of X is separated from another. Since a VT has size at most W, this will contradict our assumption that X is W plus 1 linked. So how do we find this piece VT? We first root the tree T at a node R. Using the same notation as before, we let TT denote the subtree rooted at a node T and uh, we write gt for gtt. Now, let t be the node that is as far from the root r as possible, subject to the condition that gt contains more than two w nodes of x. Clearly, t is not a leaf, or else gt could contain at most w nodes of x. So, let t1, t2, t3, and td be the children of t. Note that since each ti is uh, further than t from the root, each subgraph gti contains at most two w nodes of x. If there is a child ti, so that t gti contains at least w nodes of x, then we can define y to be w nodes of x belonging to gti and z to be w nodes of x belonging to g minus g t i. Since uh, t and the set v t is uh, non-redundant, s equals to v t i intersect v t has size at most uh, w minus 1. But uh, by 10.14, deleting s disconnects uh, y minus s from z minus s. This uh, contradicts our assumption that uh, x is w plus 1 linked. So we consider the case in which uh, there is no child ti, such that gti contains at least the w nodes of x. Figure 10.9 suggests uh, the structure of the argument in the, this case. We begin uh, with uh, the node set of gt1, combine it with uh, gt2, and then gt3, and so forth until we first obtain a set of nodes containing more than W members of X. This will clearly happen by the time we get to GTD, since GT contains more than two W nodes of X, 
and at most the W of them can belong to VT. So suppose our process of combining GT1, GT2, and so on first yields more than W members of X once we reach index I, which is less than or equals to D. Let W denote the set of nodes in the subgraphs GT1, GT2, and so on until GTI. By our stopping condition, we have uh, the size of uh, W intersect X, which is greater than W. But since uh, GTI contains fewer than W nodes of X, we also have that the size of a W intersect X is uh, less than 2W. Hence, uh, we can define Y to be W plus 1 nodes of X belonging to W, and Z to be W plus 1 nodes of X belonging to V minus W. By 10.13, the piece VT is now a set of size at most W, whose deletion disconnects Y minus VT from Z minus VT. Again, this uh, contradicts our assumption that X is uh, W plus 1 linked, completing the proof. Now an algorithm to search for a low width tree decomposition. Building on these ideas, we are now given a greedy algorithm for constructing a tree decomposition of a low width. The algorithm will be precisely determine the tree width of uh, the input graph G equals to V. Rather, given a parameter W, either it will produce a tree decomposition of width less than 4W, or it will discover a W plus 1 linked set of size at least 3W. In the later case, this uh, constitutes a proof that the tree width of G is at least W by 10.20. So, our algorithm is essentially capable of narrowing down the, tree, the true tree width of G to within a factor of 4. As I uh, discussed earlier, the running time will have uh, the form big O of F of W times M times N, where M and N are the number of edges and nodes of G, and F dot depends only on W. Having worked uh, with the tree decompositions for a little while now, one can start imagining what might be involved in a constructing one for an arbitrary input graph G. The process is depicted at a level, a high level, in figure 10.10. .10. Our goal is to make G fall apart into tree -like portions. We begin uh, the decomposition by placing the first piece vt anywhere. Now hopefully g minus vt consists of uh, several disconnected components. We recursively move each move into each of these components, placing a piece in each so that it partially overlaps the piece vt that uh, we've already defined. We hope that these new pieces cause the graph to break up further, and we thus continue in this way, pushing forward with the small sets while the graph breaks apart in front of us. The key to making this algorithm work is to argue the following. If at some point uh, we get stuck, and uh, our small sets uh, don't cause uh, the graph to break up any further, then we can extract a large W plus one linked set that proves the tree width was in fact large. Given uh, how vague this intuition is, the actual algorithm follows uh, it more closely than you might expect. We start by assuming that there is no W plus 1 linked set of size at least 3W. Our algorithm will produce a tree decomposition, provided that this holds true, and uh, otherwise we can stop with a proof that the tree, decom uh, the tree width of G is at least a W. We grow the underlying tree T of the decomposition and uh, the pieces VT in a greedy fashion. At every intermediate stage of the algorithm, we will maintain the property that we have a partial tree decomposition. By this, uh, we mean that if uh, U, which is a subset equals to V, denotes uh, the set of nodes of G that belong to at least one of uh, the pieces already constructed, then our current tree T and the pieces VT should form a tree decomposition of the subgraph of G induced on U. 
We define uh, the width of a partial treaty composition by analogy with our definition for the width of a treaty composition to be one less than the maximum piece size. This means that in order to achieve our goal of having a width of less than 4W, it is enough uh, to make sure that all pieces have size at most 4W. If uh, C is uh, a connected component of G minus U, we say that little u in capital U is a neighbor of C. If uh, there is some node V in C with an edge to U, the key behind the algorithm is not to simply maintain a partial treaty composition of width less than 4W, but also to make sure the following invariant is enforced the whole time. That is, at any stage in the execution of the algorithm, each component C of G minus U has at most three W neighbors, and there is a single piece VT that contains all of them. Why is this invariant so useful? It's useful because it will let us add a new node S to T and grow a new piece VS in the component C with uh, the confidence that S can be a leaf uh, hanging of T in the larger partial tree decomposition. Moreover, star requires there be at most three W neighbors. While we are trying to produce a tree decomposition of width less than 4W, this uh, extra W gives our new piece room to expand by a little as it moves into C. Specifically, we now described how to add a new node and a new piece so that we still have a partial tree decomposition. The invariant star is still maintained, and the set U has grown strictly larger. In this way, we make at least one node's worth of progress, and so the algorithm will terminate in at most n iterations with a tree decomposition of the whole graph G. Let C be any component of G minus U, let X be the set of neighbors of U, and let VT be a piece that, as guaranteed by star, contains O of X. We know, again, by star, that X contains at most the 3W nodes. If X, in fact, contains strictly fewer than 3W nodes, we can make progress right away for any node V in C. We define a new piece VS, which is equal to X union the size, uh, the set of V, making S a leaf of T. Since uh, all the edges from V into U have their ends in X, it is easy to confirm that we still have a partial tree decomposition obeying star and U has grown. Thus, uh, let's suppose that X has exactly three W nodes. In this case, it is less clear how to proceed. For example, if we try to create a new piece by arbitrarily adding a node V in C to W, we may end up with a component of C minus the set V, which may be O of C minus the set of V, whose neighbor set includes O three W plus one nodes of X union the set of V, and this would violate the star. Okay, let me remind you what the star says. The star says that at any stage in the execution of the algorithm, each component C of G minus U has at most three W neighbors, and there is a single piece VT that contains all of them. There's no simple way around this. For one thing, G may not actually have a low width tree decomposition. So this is precisely the place where it makes sense to ask whether X poses a genuine obstacle to the tree decomposition or not. We test whether X is a W plus one linked set. By 10.19, we can determine the answer to this in time big O of f of w times m, since uh, the size of x is equal to 3w. If it turns out that x is a w plus 1 linked, then we are all done. We can halt with the conclusion that g has the tree with at least w, which was one acceptable, one acceptable outcome of uh, the algorithm. On the other hand, if x is not w plus 1 linked, then we end up with a y and a z, which is a subset or equals to x, and a s, which is a subset equals to v, such that 
the size of s is less than the size of y, which is equal to the size of z, which is less than equals to w plus 1. And there is uh, no path from y minus s to z minus s in g minus s. The sets y, z, and s will now provide us with uh, a means uh, to extend the partial tree decomposition. Let s prime consist of the nodes of s that lie in y union z union c. The situation is now as pictured in figure 10.11. We observe that s prime intersect c is not empty. y and z each have edges into c. And uh, if uh, s intersect c were empty, there would be a path from y minus s to z minus s in g minus s that started in y, jumped immediately into c, traveled through c, and finally jumped back into z. So the size of s prime is less than the size of s, which is less than equals to w. We define a new piece V S which is equal we to define X a, a union new piece V S prime which is making equal S to a leaf of union T. S prime. All the edges is from S prime into you have a their S in a leaf of T. And uh, the size All of the X is from S prime is less than equals to three W plus W which is equal to four W. The size of X so we still have a partial tree decomposition uh, S prime over the, the size of nodes X covered by our partial tree decomposition to three W plus W which is equal to four W. So we still have so a partial tree will be done if we can show that the, the invariant s star by our partial tree decomposition. This uh, brings us wrong. exactly Since the intuition we tried to capture. So when we will be figured if uh, we can show that the, the invariant the star still x union s prime, this we are hoping that us the exactly component the intuition breaks up into further components in a nice way when discussing figure 10.10. Our partial tree decomposition now X covers union S prime. U union S prime. We are hoping and that where the we previously had a component C components of G nice minus way. U, we now may have several components. Our partial prime which is subset now equals covers to C of G S minus the where union we of precisely U had a component S prime. C of G minus Each U. Of we now may have components several C prime components so of its C neighbors prime, which is subset equals to C of uh, G minus the union of uh, u X and union s, prime. s prime, but we must Each additionally make components c prime or so at most three w such neighbors, in so that the invariant star X union continues s prime. to hold. But we must additionally so make consider sure one of our thus are components three w c prime. Neighbors. We claim that, so that all its neighbors in X continues to union hold. s prime actually belong to one of the two subsets x minus z then union s prime or x minus y then union s prime and each of these sets has size at most the size of x which is less than equal to 3w for if uh, this did not hold then c prime would have a neighbor in both y minus s and z minus s and hence there would be a path through c prime from y minus s to z minus s in g minus s but we have already argued that there cannot be such a path. This uh, establishes that star still holds after the addition of uh, the new piece and uh, completes the argument that the algorithm works correctly. Finally, what is uh, the running time of the algorithm? The time to add a new piece to the partial tree decomposition is dominated by the time required to check whether x is w plus 1 linked, which is big O of f of w plus uh, times m. We do this for at most n iterations. Since uh, we increase the number of nodes of g that we cover in each iteration, so the total running time is big O of f of w times m n. We summarize uh, the properties of our tree decomposition algorithm as follows. 10.21 Given a graph G and uh, a parameter W, the tree decomposition algorithm in this section does one of the following two things. 
it produces a trade composition of widths less than 4w, or it reports correctly that G does not have tree widths less than w. The running time of the algorithm is big O of f of w times mn for a function f dot that depends only on w.